Hey guys, here's a quick video walkthrough of um, my B14, which isn't really a B14. She came to me as hull only, so allowing me to pretty much build something fun. Um, what I wanted was a fast, yet technical bow that is sailed primarily by myself, single-handed, um, but can be enjoyed with two. Um, the design specs was should be faster than a 29er, faster than a Musto Skiff, and faster than a Swift Solo. Um, must be able to be sailed in relatively shallow water. Problem is out here, I sometimes only have three or four feet of water. So one of the requirements there was it must work in shallow water and more on that later. Um, the base, yeah, is a B14 hull and that's pretty much where it already ends. So let's get started. Let's start the front of the boat. Um, six foot carbon bowsprit um, that allows for a 300 square feet Asymmetrical spinnaker for light wind and I guess high wind fun <laughs> if you're heavy enough. Um, the spinnaker has two cleating options, more on that later on the wing. Um, it has an adjustable forestay right here. Um, the jib is a zip on jib, it has 56 square meter. Um, I put on a spinnaker retrieval hoop. That is simply because being by myself in higher winds, it's a lot easier um, to have that retrieval hoop. It's just bolted on, comes off um, super easy. Uh, spinnaker gets stored in a spinnaker bag over here, pretty standard. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that spinnaker bag to show some more details. All right, with spinnaker bag being done, um, you can see the halyards for jib and main runs through a cleat and then for a clam just for safety the lines are stored in these little baggies so they're out of the way um i put some brand name is starboard these are these high density polymer boards um i put those in simply to to reinforce um the hull a little bit because these boats are known to get a little bit soft here um it's not only on the outside but also from the inside same with where I mounted the cleats for the halyards. That piece of starboard there is not only on the outside, but also on the inside. Um, it's accessible through the service ports. In that service port as well, behind here, I have a PDF and one of these extendable, retractable um, paddles. You know, you, you just never know, just in case. Um, as mentioned, I need to sail on shallow water. Now, this is my center board, but because I'm on a dolly, I'm using this little old one here to show what I've done. What I need to do is I need to be able to lock in the dagger board in every height and it needs to be super secure. Again, does this because I'm sailing in shallow water. So what I simply created is a little contraption that just uses two hoops that can be tightened running on two cleats here that are actually stacked on top of each other. Um, and that holds that dagger board securely in place at any height. Um, I really want it to be. Another thing I've done too, the, um, my boom vang is a cascading boom vang. And um, if the board is up, uh, the boom vang actually is in the way. So what I did, I made it adjustable so you can simply, hopefully this is visible on the camera. Um, so it slides back as far, as far as I want. I can then just cleat it in. So now it's slid back. So if now my board comes up, my board has a lot more room um, to go here, but I still have a fully functioning um, boom vang. And as the board goes um, down again, simply, you know, I can then move the boom vang, boom vang attachment point further back um, for additional leverage. Um, boom vang is led um, to the rail, pretty, pretty standard issue. Um, also on the rail, we have um, chip cleat, and for the spinnaker, I did something a little bit unique. I'm going to walk around to show that. What I wanted is I wanted to have two cleating options for my spinnaker. I wanted one when I'm out on the rail, which is right here. So if I'm standing on the rail by myself, I can cleat and uncleat um, my spinnaker. Now sometimes in light winds I'm not on the rail, so 
what I did, I added another option down in here by simply wrapping it. I can cleat it onto the rail, which works pretty good. So again, rail cleat for spinnaker or if out on the wing, um, a cleat on the wing. Continuous line for the spinnaker continuous sheet. Same with my um, jib is also continuous. Um, I'm also added an adjustable shroud. Um, the black line here is for safety. In case the adjustable system gives out, it will never go all the way loose. Um, by the way, the same thing over here. I have also a safety loop. Should something happen to the track, it will not um, lose complete tension. So, yeah, adjustable. That allows me to adjust my mast rake. Um, it's looped back here and ultimately is adjusted all the way all the way back here. Um, so that gives me plenty, plenty of leverage and um, that works pretty good. I am also using um, a trapeze. The trapeze is pretty standard issue. Um, also adjustable, of course, on a bungee. And what I'm using, if you're familiar with like kite surfing, I'm using the, the chicken stick or sometimes also called donkey dick, excuse the language, um, to secure um, the harness to the trapeze lines. Um, as far as harnesses themselves, I'm using in light winds um, a Dakin Reflex seat harness. So that is actually a windsurfing seat harness um, that I use. Super comfortable. And I'm also sometimes using a Dakin Renegade harness. Um, that is a waist harness. It gives me a little bit more movement, but not as much support. Um, a quick note, I'm not sponsored by Dakine. This is not a product endorsement. It is just what I'm using and um, it works pretty good. And for those not familiar with how um, a kiteboarding, you know, a chicken stick works, it is basically, it locks in here and therefore prevents the hook from coming out. Um, in a cap size or something, it's obviously super easy. All needs to be do is just pull and um, yeah, you're free. Super, super simple. Speaking of cap sizing, what I also added, I added um, a cap size line right here. So all it is is basically a piece of rope with a, with a bowline at the end. If the bow does fall over, I can um, hook with this loop into my harness stand on my center board and um, that gives me you know my body weight to um, bring the boat upright um, while underway I just let these lines drag in the water um, it really doesn't add much drag super super practical um, to have the spinnaker tack line is controlled through here and the spinnaker out haul is controlled through here I'm using the tack line also to bring in my bowsprit. Um, you could use a bungee cord to do this, but I like using the tack line. It, it just simply, it works for me. I'm using a double tiller with a fairly long um, extensions for the reason is if I'm hooked in and standing on the rail, I'm pretty far out there. Um, the rudder currently held in place with a safety pin. I'm gonna just um, pull out my safety pin here real quick to free the rudder. So again sailing in shallow water I need this rudder to come up um, by itself if I hit anything but I also need to be able to lower the rudder again if I'm past the sandbar etc. And how it's done it's simply with these red control lines it, um, it pulls the rudder down. Now for sailing in um, deep water, if I know I have deep water, I can put um, a cleat in here that actually then cleats the rudder in the down position, but I generally just leave it open and it stays pretty put. Um, and then it just splits my little rudder downhaul to each um, to each of my tiller extensions. Um, the mainsail, pretty standard issue with 
out hall. The out hall runs all the way um, to the front. So nothing really magic there. Um, one thing worth pointing out, these little control boxes here with um, the cleats. So this is my safety cleat uh, for my adjustable shrouds. This one here is unused. And um, this one here is again for, for my shrouds. It's nice to let the lines just run right through the center. Another box I built right here, it actually has four cleats. And that has two for my um, dagger board. This one is my spinnaker halyard. And I have one more down here for my Cunningham, which is currently not rigged up. The downhaul of my mainsail is run through the rail. Generally, don't need to adjust it. Therefore, a simple cleat here and letting it hang um, does the job. The points for um, the spinnaker blocks, I can move that. So currently this is the low position. I have another one here for a high position. Generally, if I cleat on the inside on my rail in low wind, I run them low on higher winds. I put my block up here and then cleat here. So that's just again an, another option built into the boat. The mast is an M2 Super Sparse, and I did put a mast float up on here. Um, it's made out of high density foam, uh, same what you find in surfboards, that doesn't take on any water. Uh, reason is, I have um, mud and sand out there, and um, if I tip over, I get my mast stuck in the mud, which is not really fun. So I'm happy to sacrifice half a knot of boat speed, but I have a float up there. Uh, I chose not to go with the commercially available ones from Hobie because they are too big and too heavy. So making my own out of high density foam, super easy, super simple and works 100%. Uh, the mast is from originally from a 505 in case anybody wonders. Again, this boat came to me as hull only. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, she works super great now because you know, the ultimate question, what is the VMAX? I get her to 14 knots by myself. Um, I can't get her by myself over 14 knots because I'm afraid I'm simply too light. So anyways, that's what I did with an old B14 hull that came to me. Um, yeah, works pretty awesome, super fun.